Okay, so what's the first thing you think of when you see this guy? This whole thing, all the way through here. Yeah, it's a door. That's the first thing I thought of too. So let's make this thing a door. So I'm just gonna really treat this pretty much the same way I would treat any kind of slab wood epoxy project because if you think about it, a door really is just a vertical table. Just take the legs off a table, add a doorknob, add some hinges, and boom, there you go. So I start by just cleaning up the slab by taking off all of the bark and dead rotten wood and just really just making sure there's no creepy crawlies still living in it. And normally, after I take off all the large pieces of bark, I'd use a wire wheel attachment on a drill to really clean up all the edges, and that takes a long time. For example, something of this size would take upwards of probably like two hours. But I came up with an idea of using the shaping tool I picked up for this video and it worked perfect. It only took me 20 minutes to do the whole thing. But there's one big problem. It's a mess. And when I say mess, I mean, oh my God, a mess. Have you ever found a Tupperware container in like the bottom of your trunk or hidden somewhere or way in the back of the fridge and it's been there for so long that you're not even gonna open it up, you just say, nah, nah, it's too far gone and just throw the thing away? That's what I felt like doing with my whole entire shop. But after the several hours of cleaning, I wanted to whip together a quick router sled just so I could get this down to about an inch and a half or so and kind of just level it off because there's a bit of a bow in it. Okay, so I found my first screw up and surprisingly, it has nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with my complete inability to read descriptions of things when I buy stuff. And the screw up, is this, it's my new flattening bit. You could tell it's pretty small because I didn't read the description well enough to realize this is only one inch big and it came today and I'm, I don't really feel like waiting on ordering a new one so I am actually just gonna use this. So with some simple math, we can figure out how long this is actually gonna take me. So if this is a one inch bit, that's 80 inches long and if roughly every pass is about 30 seconds, that's 80 passes at 30 seconds, which is gonna equal that. And if I do roughly say, let's say three passes on each side, it's gonna be that times six, which is gonna give me that. And that in hours is, shit. But some good news, it actually only took me about three hours and 45 minutes. So yay for that. But whatever, it's done, on to the next part. Epoxy. Look how dumb I look with the phone mounted on my head. Yeesh. Anyways, for this project, I figured out I would need about 11 gallons of deep pour epoxy, and in the biz, that's called a crap load of epoxy. The epoxy alone costs $700, so I didn't want to mess this up. That's why I'm only mixing up three gallons at a time, and I'm using a syringe to measure out the dye, because I want each batch to be exactly the same. But now time to pour. Look at that split screen action getting you all the angles. This did end up taking all 11 gallons. I was really hoping I overestimated it and it would take a little bit less and I could save some money, but nope, still the most expensive door in the world. In the world. Okay, so it's been about four days and it's fully cured, ready for the next step. And you can tell it's fully cured by me knocking on it for absolutely no reason whatsoever. Why am I doing that? But first, let's take a look at the bottom side and yeah, it is really heavy. As you can see, there's a few small air pockets, but I don't think I'm going to even router this side. I'm just going to fill in the air pockets with some epoxy and sand it down because I think it actually looks really good. But not so lucky with the top side, I still need to flatten and level it, so let's just get to flattening it. And now that that's done, let's move the sanding. Oh yay, sanding. Sanding and sanding and sanding, endless sanding. Look at that, a new shirt, a new day, and it's still going. Oh my god, I hate this. But after about 10 hours total of sanding, it's eventually done. 
And now my favorite part, the finish. I love doing this because it just makes everything come alive. The colors start to pop. Everything looks more crisp and more beautiful. And I'm using a Rubio Monaco, so you have to actually kind of scrub it in. I go really, really lightly over the epoxy parts and add a little bit more pressure on the wood areas just because I don't want to risk scratching the epoxy. But with Rubio or any finish, you have to let it sit for a few minutes before you can wipe it off. And during that time, I like to sit and look at my dust collection system. And think of all the people who are ragingly mad at me for not putting a grounding wire in the pipes. It's very calming for me. But after about five minutes, it is time to... Wax on. Wax off. Wipey, wipey. Oh, look at that. It looks so good. Okay, so the door is pretty much done. I got the handle put on, I got the hinges put on, everything's ready to go and I'm about to go mount it. But I'm gonna run into one huge issue and that's the weight. A normal interior door weighs right around 33 pounds. This one weighs over 100 pounds. Now for an interior door, these are the size of screws that you use on the hinges and they hold a 33 pound door perfect. But now for a 100 pound door, I'm thinking, some of these guys. I think these are gonna work perfect in all the hinges, so let's go. Oh, hello. How do you like my new door? This is awesome. And all it took me was about $2,000, about four weeks, a whole entire shop, about $10,000 of equipment, and you can have one of these too. Is this thing practical? Absolutely not. Should you do it? Yeah, I'm gonna have to say, don't waste your money. But this thing is awesome, and if as long as it doesn't rip the wall off, I think it'll be okay. All right, that's it. I just want to say thank you so much for sticking around. If you could, could you please just drop a like, a comment, tell me what you think of this. And also, I just got new stickers. I'll put them in my Etsy shop, and I'll leave the Etsy link down below. But as usual, just thank you so much for watching. I genuinely appreciate it, and I'll see you next time. Oh, your coffee tails so dirty.